What is going on all you minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition. And today I am kicking off the comprehensive reading order of Batman in Collected Editions. This is part one of four. So I'm going to be focusing everything from year one all the way up until the road to no man's land. So please stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. Now, before I get started, a huge, huge thank you to our patrons for voting for this. Uh, these videos are made possible by people like you all. And if you are interested in joining our patron, it's all in the description down below. We have different tiers, like voting for old reader, new reader books, uh, voting for reading orders, and also early access to videos, much like this one. So if you want to join, it's a great way to support the channel if you can do so. Now, when I do these videos, I do try to stay away from spoilers. However, and I will warn you ahead of time, some of the titles of these books are kind of a spoiler. As a matter of fact, they are spoiler-ish. So keep that in mind before going into this video. I'll try to warn you ahead of time which titles they'll be. But I'd hate to ruin anything for anybody, but just in case, keep that in mind. This takes place after Crisis on Infinite Earths. If you want to check out the Golden Age stuff, there's a bunch of those omnibuses already available. Um, and from looking at this, you can see the lack of omnis post-Crisis, which we'll get to talk about that in a little bit. So keep that in mind. Even though there's going to be some stories in here that take place before Crisis, Crisis gave us that reboot of the universe, and it's where my DC began, as I've stated many times on the channel. The other thing I was going to say is that I'm mainly focusing on Batman and Detective Comics. That's it. So, it, no Shadow of the Bat, no Legends of the Dark Knight, no Dark Knight later on, um, or miniseries, because that would take me a crap ton of videos to do. And I want to just focus on the main story. However, I will say that I do mention those if they're crucial to the storyline later on or if they're part of a crossover. But I will tell you where to read Shadow of the Bat or Legends of the Dark Knight, especially the important stories that later affect the ongoing storyline. So keep that in mind. So this is part one of four. Let's go ahead and get started where it all began for most of us with Batman Year One. This is it. This is where everything began for me, for a lot of us uh, that started reading Batman. And it's probably the place that I still tell people, if you want to get into Batman, this is the place. There are trade paperback editions of this. There are absolute editions of this. And of course, hardcovers, deluxe editions. But this is Batman Year One by Frank Miller. Uh, David Mazzucchelli, who's the artist on this, who teamed up with uh, Frank Miller again when they did Daredevil. And it's literally Bruce Wayne coming back to Gotham City and being Batman for one year. It's his first year being Batman. There are characters and Easter eggs that pop up, like later on become villains or become allies. But this is where it all began, and it sets the new status quo. As a matter of fact, I think this is the one story that hasn't, well, aspects of it have been retcon, uh, but most of it has not been retcon, which is crazy because we'll get to year two in a little bit. So this is where I suggest reading Batman Tales of the Demon. This is pre-Crisis on Infinite Earths, but it introduces us to the character of Raja Ghoul, who is Batman, my favorite Bat villain. So it's important to me that I have to tell you to read this story because the Demon Head storyline has not been retconned. It's been modernized a few times, but Raj is just one of these villains that keeps coming back in the Batman story. And I feel like this is an important place. Him and Talia both appear in this. This has been recently released in this version, which has not been recolored, which is awesome. There's also later on going to be like uh, Birth of the Demon and Son of the Demon, which are kind of follow-ups to this by Mark uh, Mike W. Barr. But this is mainly Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams. All right, this is a book that's been out of print for a while, and I can't believe it went out of print uh, so quick. It's not the greatest collection. So this is Batman Second Chances, and what makes this interesting is that this has two issues pre-Crisis on Infinite Earths, um, and it's the reintroduction of Jason Todd. Jason Todd looked a little bit different in the original appearance that he was in. Uh, and then it has issues after Batman Year One. So now we have Jason Todd. He's going to be donning the costume of Robin because he is the second Robin. And this is pretty much the storyline of how Bruce met Jason Todd, how Dick Grayson kind of became his own man because now Dick Grayson, the original Robin, is hanging out with the Teen Titans. And that just reminded me, I haven't done 
a reading order of Robin. I've done Nightwing, I've done Birds of Prey, and Batgirl, but I haven't done a reading order of Robin. So, second chances. And here we have Batman Dark Knight Detective. We don't have Omnis, but we have these great trade paperback collections that have been coming out recently. And Dark Knight and Cape Crusader are just wonderful collections for any of us that have been waiting for trade paperbacks in chronological order. And this is Mike W. Barr mainly writing Detective Comics. So basically, Dark Knight Detective is Detective Comics and Cape Crusader is the Batman comic. Uh, pretty soon we'll add Legends of the Dark Knight and of course Shadow of the Bat a little bit later. And as a matter of fact, this is a reintroduction to a lot of these characters um, where we get characters like Poison Ivy and the Scarecrow. So I guess one of the suggestions I have here are probably go back and read some of those Legends of the Dark Knight trade paperbacks such as Shaman, Prey, Gothic, and more importantly Venom which will play a big role later on during Nightfall. And without giving spoilers away, most of this is done by Mike W. Barr and you have Alan Davis on artwork. And that is the same team, well, the first, uh, the later half that gave us Batman Year Two. And I wanna talk about that next. And here we have Batman Year Two, Fear the Reaper. So these are those missing issues that were not in the Batman Dark Knight Detective Volume One. This also has the full circle storyline, or the graphic novel. It's the story of Batman's second year, and he's fighting this character known as the Reaper, who has come and killed a bunch of uh, villains, offing a bunch of mafia bosses, and it's got beautiful artwork by Todd McFarlane. This one has been recolored, and honestly, I would get the better deluxe edition that has the covers too. This one doesn't. What the hell's wrong with me? This is one of my favorite Batman stories. I know, and I'm such an apologist for this this storyline. Like people hate this story, but I, I don't know. I'm a sucker for this story basically because it was probably my childhood. But you have Todd McFarlane, and then on top of that, you have Alan Davis finishing out the run, and then you have Alan Davis uh, doing the full circle storyline. But I will say this has been retcon, meaning that it is no longer part of continuity because we had a trilogy of stories starting with Batman the Haunted Night and The Long Halloween, which actually retcon volume two or year two rather, and Dark Victory, which retcon year three, which is really Robin year one. So uh, retconning means it's when they're going back and rewriting history to either move the story forward or change some things or add characters. But this is, if you've not picked this up, these are available in Absolute Editions as well as a nice uh, omnibus, which is low in stock recently. So if you don't wanna read year two, then I suggest reading at least this trilogy right here, starting with Haunted Night, Long Halloween, and Dark Victory. All of these books are available in that one omnibus. And now I wanna tell you about this story right here. This is The Dark Knight Returns. This is the story that made so many people come and read comic books. So many old fans come back and read about their old aged Batman. If you've not read it, I strongly recommend reading it. Uh, Dark Knight Strikes Again. Eh, you know, you can read it as a completist. And then there's also The Master Race and everything else that Frank Miller has written. But really, you want to read The Dark Knight Returns. And I think this is a really good spot for it even though these were written way before this. This literally was written around the time year one was written. But I like people to get to know the character of Batman as a younger Batman and then go and see the old Batman in this possible future. So there's these things called the Elseworld, which are just alternate realities. And they're not necessary for reading uh, the Batman reading order, but they're a lot of fun ones. Such as, I love the Red Ring trilogy, the vampire one, Batman's a vampire. Next up is Batman Killing Joke. Uh, this is Alan Moore and Brian Boland teaming up to give us a sort of origin story for the Joker. It's this wonderful story that kind of gives us a background to who the Joker was, or maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. I'm going to give that away. And it's the story where, man, okay, I have to talk about the spoiler. So if you don't know what, it, what the big thing is in The Killing Joke, then please uh, skip to the next book which will be Cape Crusader Volume 1. So this is pretty much the story of how Joker goes in and shoots Barbara Gordon and does horrible things to her, taking pictures to show her dad 
Um, she is paralyzed, so Barbara Gordon, who was once Batgirl, is now paralyzed from the waist down. So she's stuck in a wheelchair because of the Joker. And the Joker, the whole reason the Joker's trying to do this is because he's trying to prove that one bad day can break anybody. And he's trying to break Commissioner Gordon. So this is, you know, it's, it's definitely mature content, but it is in continuity, right? I can't flip through the end there, but it's got beautiful artwork by Brian Boland. There's an absolute edition. There are trade paperbacks available of this. It's one of my favorite Batman stories, and I highly recommend reading it, and this is the place where I would read it. Man, there's a lot of reading we have to do before you get to the Cape Crusader Volume 1. Sorry, this is why I did the, why I had to read a lot. Now, we've had 10 Knights of the Beast uh, release in a smaller trade paperback. That's why I'm so glad they're doing these. So, Cape Crusader gives us the Batman stories. Most of this stuff is written by Jim Starlin. Jim Starlin is the gentleman that created, of course, Thanos, uh, gave us the Infinity Gauntlet, and gave us a title that's coming up here in a little bit that I'll warn you about if you don't want to be spoiled. But the most important thing about this to someone like me is that this book right here, the main artist on this book is Jim Aparo. And Jim Aparo was my childhood Batman artist. So to me, because of that, he is my definitive Batman artist. So it's this Batman right here that I grew up with. And damn, um, I, was, I, was, I remember how much it hit me when he passed away. And um, yeah. So we have a story here in the annual. This one's by Mike Barron. But most of this stuff is Jim Aparo. And this is Batman mainly teaming up with Robin, Jason Todd now, and Jason Todd, I, you know, for, for a comic reader when these books were coming out, he was not well liked. Like, I remember a lot of my friends and I at school were like, man, Robin sucks. I really miss Dick Grayson. I wish he would come back. And yes, Jason Todd does a couple things in this book that makes question, like, makes Batman question whether he made the right choice or not in making him Robin. Well, that's going to be answered in the next book. Because the next book, the title, again, spoiler, so warning, if you don't want to know what that title is, skip on to the Batman Cape Crusader Volume 2. But Batman, Death in the Family. I mean, if that cover doesn't give it away, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, this is the four-part series that had wonderful covers by Mike Mignola. It's drawn by, yes, you guessed it, Jim Aparo. And they had a little gimmick when this was coming out. And it was, does Robin live or die? It's a story of Robin, Jason Todd, trying to find out who his real mother is. He's got three likable candidates, so he travels the world. And I know if you've been reading Batman even for a year, you know about the crowbar. But if you don't, I'm not going to spoil that for you. But there was a cliffhanger at the end of one of the issues. And you had to call a 900 number. It was 75 cents, because I remember it was 1989. And I was like, Mom, Dad, I don't think I even asked. I think I just called. Does Robin live or does Robin die? It was the reader's choice, right? Well, spoilers, most of us voted him to die, including myself. I didn't like the guy, and he did. So Jason Todd dies as Robin. So that's why I wanted to say spoilers, you know, Joker kills him. And, and no matter what people say to me, like, oh, the Joker's the darkest he's ever been in Arkham Asylum. I'm like, did y'all forget that about the crowbar? He, I mean, he, he paralyzed... Barbara Gordon, and did horrible things to her, took pictures, showed her dad, and then he killed a kid, an under, like a, a teenager. That's pretty damn dark. And here is Batman the Cape Crusader Volume 2. These are after the events of everything going on in Death in the Family. This stuff now is Mark Wolfman joining Jim Aparo. So, you know, Batman has to deal with the fact that he lost the Robin. So it's a lot of finding himself through the help of his friends, um, through the help of his um, allies. And I don't want to spoil who shows up because there's some really powerful stories in this particular collection. But in the end, I'll be talking about Jason Todd again. Uh, well, in part two of this reading order. 
And one of the most important things I'm going to say about this is that this contains year three. But like I mentioned, Dark Victory retconned that. But I would strongly suggest reading year three within the pages of the Cape Crusader volume two. So here we have the Dark Knight Detective volume two. This begins this wonderful, wonderful Alan Grant and Norm Brayfogle collaboration. This was awesome. It's got John Wagner as well. And pretty much this volume right here is a lot different than the first volume. So the, the first volume focuses on those heavy hitters, right? Like you had the Joker, you had the Catwoman show up and Penguin. This one is about characters like Poison Ivy and the Ventriloquist. Ratcatcher makes his first appearance here. There he is. And then the Corrosive Man, who's a new... So those two new, last characters are new characters. And it's also during this particular run that Alan Grant brings back Vicky Vell character Vicky Vell who appeared years ago in Batman but he probably brought her back because of this little movie that Tim Burton was working on at the time Batman a lonely place of dying by the way the trade paperback of lonely place of God, mine is freaking aged Woo! I need to I need to get that again I think there's a deluxe edition of death in the family and this maybe combined but there's been hard covers of death in the family and lonely place of dying because they kind of go hand in hand um, this is also collected in one of the Teen Titans omnibus, but this is pretty much the story that enters us, introduces us to Tim Drake, who some of you all know becomes the third Robin, right? It's the story of how Batman always needs a Robin, so Tim Drake is trying to get Dick Grayson and Batman back together. We need the dynamic duo. Batman cannot exist in a world without a Robin, and well, things still play out the way that Tim Drake intended it. So it's one of my favorite Batman stories. Here is where I strongly suggest reading Arkham Asylum by Grant Morrison. There's a beautiful absolute edition. Why don't I have it? I don't know, but I need to get on that. And it's pretty much a story by Grant Morrison about what happens in Arkham Asylum. And love it, and I think it's strongly recommended to read it here. Batman, The Cape Crusader, Volume 3. So back to... Batman by Jim Starlin. I'm sorry, uh, Marv Wolfman and Jim Aparo. Also, uh, Norm Brayfogle joins in this one too for a few issues. I think it's the annual. No, no, it's the crossover. It's the crossover event. So here we have the Penguin playing a big pivotal role towards the beginning. You have Tim Drake trying to man up and be his own type of sidekick, even though he's not full-fledged sidekick yet. And then we have the return of the Riddler. There's this freaking awesome story in here called Eye of the Beholder, which tells the origin of Two-Face. And yeah, this one here, it's artwork by Chris Sprouse. And it's the origin that was modernized for the time and has been done again, even in, um, well, never mind, I'm not going to spoil that. But if you've seen the movie, you're familiar with the storyline, and it's practically the one they've been using for the cartoon and the movie, and it's freaking awesome. And the entire reason to own this, well for that Jim Aparo artwork aside, is that one storyline. And another thing I forgot to mention about this volume is that this is the introduction of Harold. He's the guy that makes machines or bat little gimmicks for Batman. He lives in the bat cave. Yeah, they have an interesting relationship. Anyway, you'll, you'll see him later on in the reading order, so I did want to bring him up. And here we have Batman the Dark Knight Detective Volume 3 blind justice so i should tell you what this collects but we not only have norm bray fogel but that name right there sam ham and who is sam ham well he was the co-writer of tim burton's batman so now he's joined by norm bray fogel uh dennis cohen and alan grant and john wagner and it's <laughs> the stories in here are pretty interesting i know it's like um what was it a aliens that are smuggling guns into gotham and batman's trying to figure out what's going on and there's also the blind justice uh multi-part issues back here and i can't give away what happens with that storyline there is a volume four that has been solicited already uh i think it comes out in january of 2021 and that one collects detective comics 601 to 611 and detective comics annual number two 609 by the way Detective Comics 609 has been collected in the Anarchy trade paperback that had the mini series of Anarchy. But we're not focusing on minis unless they are crucial. And here we finally have it. One of my favorite Norm Brayfogle pictures, The Cape Crusader Volume 4. This 
volume serves as the origin story of Tim Drake as Robin. Most people, I'm sure anybody watching this, knows that Tim Drake becomes the third Robin. And, oh man, it's freaking awesome in the costume. Oh, I, I, it sucks I can't talk about spoilers, but you know what? It's so much better if you find out for yourself. Now we have Catwoman and Mad Hatter joining in the ranks of the villains, showing up to cause havoc in Gotham, of course. Um, there is a fifth volume, which I'm so happy they're continuing this, collecting issues 466 and to 473 in Detective Comics 639 to 640, and that's part of the, oh, what the heck was that crossover called? The Idiot Root crossover, and that comes out, I think, in January of 2021, so, and after reading this, or if you want to wait until volume 5 comes out, check out The Shadow of the Bat, I think there's four trade paperbacks, and they can be read, you know, and you can read volume one here and then volume two like right after nightfall the first nightfall omnibus but you can honestly read them back to back it's not gonna ruin anything well except for the crossover parts that's why i said read volume one before nightfall and then volume two after nightfall omnibus volume one now at this moment i just want to remind you all to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for we put out videos every day so why do i have these what's going on well robin reborn Collects issues of Batman, 455 to 457, which you've seen already. But it also has Detective Comics 618 to 621, which has not been collected yet. And those issues right there are freaking awesome. And of course, it has the Robin issues. And then we have Robin Volume 2, Robin Triumphant. Why is this here? Well, because it collects Batman 465, 467, and 469, and then Robin 2 and 3. I think both of these, even though they're out of print, I think they're still not as expensive as other trade paperbacks when they go out of print. Looking at you, Second Chances, I'm sorry about that. I hope they reprint them. You know, I hope we get Omnis of these one day. This is the stuff that I grew up reading. Oh, man, when, when Tim Drake goes solo, boy, maybe I need to do a Robin reading order. Azriel, Volume 1, Fallen Angel. Don't let that volume number fool you. This is the only one that was collected. Uh, this collects sort of Azrael 1 through 4. Uh, and then it collects Showcase 94, number 10, and Azrael 1 through 7. But we're mainly focusing on the four-issue miniseries written by Dennis O'Neill and drawn by this guy that would eventually blow up, mainly at Marvel, Joe Quesada. Inks are done by Kevin Nolan. And it introduces us to this character of Azrael, who is Gene Paul Valley, who plays a big, important role in an upcoming event. As a matter of fact, this is the next book I'm going to talk about. All right, what's a Batman reading order without Batman Nightfall? The story that brought so many new readers to reading Batman and a lot of people that love Batman just to walk away from the character. Because of the success of Superman, the death of Superman, DC decided to do something else. So, spoilers, because I have to talk about this and... You know, I, I hate to ruin this for anybody, but again, I do want to warn you all ahead of time. Uh, this is the story where we are introduced to Bane. And Bane is this guy that's been just scheming and scheming behind the scenes, letting a bunch of prisoners loose. People are learning his name. And eventually he lets Arkham Asylum people lose. So the villains, the Bat villains are running amok. It's up to him and uh, Robin and their new friend, Jean Paul Valley, to stop them. Well... They do, for the most part, but not without consequence, of course. I'm sure most of you know where this is going, and that is the breaking of the back. So Bruce Wayne's back is broken during this storyline in this first omnibus. All of this stuff, by the way, Doug Mensch, uh, you have Alan Grant, and Chuck Dixon now comes aboard. You still have Jim Aparo, uh, Scott Hanna, and Graham Nolan are doing artwork. Oh, man. Yeah. I know a lot of people were like, man, how the how's this going to happen? But DC did it. So now I'm talking about some Shadow of the Bat issues because Shadow of the Bat and Legends of the Dark Knight play a role in these stories here. So that's why. And here we have Nightfall Omnibus Volume 2. We have a new Batman. It's not Bruce Wayne. But like I said, there's a reason why I suggested reading sort of Asriel first. But let's keep going. It's been a series of trade paperbacks of Nightfall. We never had the search or uh, Nights. Uh, 
night quest collected so this is the first time we really see the character the new character who's behind batman just become batman uh older villains come back and some of them realize wait a minute you're not the same batman under there you're somebody else you're a phony batman and he goes kind of crazy right because this is where the Robin series kind of spins off. He, he snaps on Robin. So after reading this omnibus, if you want to read the Robin trades, this is where his ongoing begins. Uh, meanwhile, Bruce Wayne is trying to find a cure, right, uh, for his broken back because they make such a thing. But, uh, yep, I don't have the recent trade paperbacks, the ones with the beautiful spines all connecting together. So I don't know if they've added things to those, like sort of Asriel, but I seriously doubt it. And here we have Batman Nightfall Volume 3, Night's End. This is where Bruce Wayne has managed to get his back right, kind of like he did in the third movie of The Dark Knight Rises. And he challenges the new Batman for the rights as to who gets to be Batman again. So there's this wonderful story. It not only has the Night's End storyline, but it also has Prodigal. It's a beautiful freaking story, and I don't want to ruin it. But for for reasons, Batman, Bruce Wayne, has to leave uh, Gotham again really quick, and he leaves Dick Grayson in charge of being batman again and there's beautiful moments between bruce wayne and dick grayson such as like why didn't you ask me to be batman the first time oh man it's wonderful there's also the troika storyline within these pages here um or i'm sorry it leads into the troika storyline where he gets a new costume and for some reason we have nightwing alfred returns here oh because alfred was gone for a while after the events of night fall so but that fits so much better in the Nightwing stories. So after Nightfall, after those Omnis, we have this event right here called Zero Hour. And not to spoil anything, but every one of the Batman family titles had a Zero Hour crossover. So that's where you'll find Batman in, in the pages of here. And as well as Detective Comics, because the both, both of them are coming out every month. You'll have Robin in here. And... I don't want to spoil anything as to who they meet, uh, but some of them are time travel things. Some of them are repercussions of what's happening during Zero Hour. It's not necessary to read Zero Hour. Uh, I know some people hate that event, but I strongly suggest reading it before reading this. Batman by Doug Minch and Kelly Jones. Th Kelly Jones had been doing the artwork, the covers for the Batman Nightfall series. So a lot of people, a lot of us were familiar with him because of that. Now, the, <laughs> the stories in here are so different than what was happening before. Right? These are issues from mainly Batman. And it, these are more smaller horror-themed stories. And I love it because it's literally Doug Mensch just playing to his artist so we have characters like the scarecrow just all these things that are happening these horror little things that are happening within gotham city and batman is by himself again i mean robin's still around from time to time but it's basically batman just being by himself oh, the team up with dead man is so freaking good there's a second volume of this but that i can't talk about just yet so here is tales of the batman by jh williams a phenomenal artist again Doug Minch writing most of the stuff and just collects Batman from all over the place but I've put it here even though it's got issues from like the 600 and the 21st annual and it's got Dark Knight even though I'm not talking about that but it collects it, Batman 526 and 550 and then, like I said some from the 600s and it's mainly artwork by J.H. Williams who is phen a phenomenal artist uh, later on, of course, he teams up with Neil Gaiman for the Sandman Overture and, of course, um, Promethea with Alan Moore. Now, we have the next crossover event among the Bat family, and that is Contagion. There is a virus that breaks out, and Gotham City is infected. The rich are trying to buy a cure, but there is no cure of course, there's going to be, right? But it's up to Catwoman, uh, the Huntress, Azrael to team up and help Batman and Robin and everyone else find the cure. Now, what's interesting about this is this is where I think 
No Man's Land begins. That doesn't happen for about, I want to say about a year and a half later. No, actually two years later, but this is where it all begins because the villain behind this, the reason there's a virus, well, let's go ahead and talk about the next book, is revealed in this series of trade paperbacks, and that is Batman Legacy. Let's look at volume one really quick. And this is basically Chuck Dixon, Alan Grant, and Doug Minch writing the stories of Batman again through the pages of Detective Comics, through the pages of Batman, the crossover will involve Robin, and it's pretty much Batman trying to figure out who brought the virus in, who was patient zero, why is it so important? We got, there you have uh, Cheesecake right there with Jim Ballon's artwork on Catwoman. And there are two volumes. Previously, this was collected in one volume that leaves out a lot of the story. So I'm glad that DC decided to do this. And I think, I want to say volume one is out of print right now, but it's not that expensive. But volume one, here you have volume two. I can't talk about this one very much because this one reveals who was behind the virus what characters teamed up against Batman and oh man the revelation of a character returning I was like yes I remember at the comic book store people were like what's wrong because issue 700 had this it came like in a manila folder kind of cover that you took out the issue and then you read it oh man it's wonderful let me make sure I don't flip through spoilers but this is pretty much the aftermath of what happened in Contagion and and then how many lives were affected because of that virus that broke out in Gotham. I told you there was a volume two, so here we are with Batman by Doug Minch and Kelly Jones volume two. Some of this stuff you've probably already seen in, and it's a little bit of double dipping in Contagion and in Batman Legacy, but because of the way that DC releases their books, releases, Uncanny Omar Talk Pretty One Day, releases their books, I didn't want to take a gamble because I don't know when they'll actually do these things in chronological order. But here we have, again, Doug Mensch teaming up with Kelly Jones. Uh, there, Like I said, there are some double dipping issues, but for the most part, this has a lot of the material that has not been previously collected in collected editions format. Now, what could be worse than a freaking virus breaking out, right, in Gotham? Well, how about a giant earthquake? A freaking giant earthquake that kills off some allies, some like a bunch of civilians in Gotham City. What's going on? Well, later on it's revealed what happened, right? I'm not going to spoil it, but this is another thing that leads into No Man's Land, which we'll get to here in a little bit. But Cataclysm is the big earthquake. Uh, Arkham Asylum, they're going through their own thing. And Nightwing, Robin are involved. They're trying to help Batman out. He's trying to help the city out. Uh, Huntress, spoiler, come in. Oh, man, this is a... I, I really like this time of Batman. And that leads directly into Road to No Man's Land. Previously not collected, so I love the fact that this is has the Aftershock storylines. By the way, there is an omnibus of Road to No Man's Land coming out that collects Cataclysm, the two volumes of No Man's Land that I'm going to show. Now, I don't know if it's an error... Because in the catalog, it shows that it does not contain issue 553. And if that's true, that's the only issue that's missing that you would have to keep this book for if you want to. But I just wanted to uh, give you all a heads up. I don't have the book. It's not out yet. You know, I'll be doing, I'll be happy to take a look at it when it comes out. So, you know, most of the time, I don't want to say most of the time, but sometimes, that's right, Mark Buckingham is now the artist. Of course, he went on to do Fables. He was the inker for Chris Bacalo's artwork. Uh, during the death miniseries um, Alan Grant Doug Manch still writing Chuck Dixon now playing a bigger role of course so what I was gonna say is that I don't mean a lot of the time I mean sometimes the solicits or the catalog is wrong let's look at volume two really quick here's volume two so sometimes the catalogs are wrong because uh, an, an issue would be added later into the actual physical release of the omnibus such as the case of like Scott Snyder's omnibus uh, somebody Owen Owen reminded me from a Facebook group that sometimes these catalog or solicitations aren't hundred percent accurate when it comes to DC books so pretty much road to no man's land is showing what the citizens of Gotham what the villains of Gotham what the heroes of Gotham are doing when after the earthquake hit 
right? And why the government decides to block off Gotham and just make it a no man's land. Make it everybody for themselves, that they are no longer operating under the United States. Now, for this, you've got the return of Dennis O'Neill. Uh, you've got this guy that wasn't really known to me back then, Greg Rucka, now writing some of these stories. As well as another newcomer, Kelly Puckett, and then Chuck Dixon and Alan Grant writing this. And this takes us all the way up until No Man's Land. Now you got issues of Azrael thrown in there. Now, most of these books can be bought from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was it. That was part one. Let me know in those comments down below what I left out, what I should have added. What do you think should have been in here as the crucial part of this reading order? Keeping in mind that I was doing basically Batman and Detective Comics. Again, this is part one of four. So next week will be all the way from No Man's Land to infinite crisis so tune in for that subscribe to the channel like i mentioned uh earlier if you haven't subscribed i don't know why not don't forget to hit like uh ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live check out our patreon because we have different tiers and they get to vote on cool things like this and they have early access to videos much like this one it's a great place to support the channel if you can do so and more importantly please everybody stay healthy stay safe and much love to all of you